Picture this. You go into the garden center to pick up something very specific for a video, but of course you have to go around to see and touch every single plant in the entire store. Naturally, you check the clearance aisle and there it is. An offer you can't deny, a huge plant with an even greater discount. Way too good to pass on it, am I right? Hi, I'm Christina from Leafy Luster and I just bought a huge philodendron plowmanii from the clearance aisle. <laughs> when buying plants in general, it is advised to put them in some sort of quarantine before you group them with your existing plant collection. When buying plants on sale or clearance, you're on a whole nother level because this is not just a little safety precaution, it's a project. Because these plants are usually already visibly riddled with pests spider mites, mealybugs, thrips, you name it, they probably all on there. The leaves are already looking rough or damaged. You don't know what else might be the case with these plants. They might be root bound or overgrown as well. So you really take on a project when purchasing one of these plants. Nonetheless, I decided to buy this bad boy. A, I don't have a plowmania in my collection yet. B, it's absolutely massive like this is amazing and see the deal was too good to pass originally this plant cost 169.99 so 170 euro i got it on clearance for 50 euros hello this was just too good of a deal and i had to get it plus look at this chunk of a stem on this plant As I said, buying plants on sale is a project. There are several steps you need to take first before you can group it in with your other plants. First off, separation is key. Please put it somewhere else, away from your other plants, just so you can treat the pests that might be on there first and keep your plant collection safe. Step two, you need to assess the situation. So now is the time to check for the pests that are on the plant. In this case, I already see a few mealybugs crawling around there. These guys are kind of disgusting, not gonna lie, but they are quite easy to treat. Other than that, I don't see any thrips or signs of thrip damage. I'm expecting there might be a few spider mites as well. You will typically see little webbing, especially on the sinus of the plant or where the petiole meets the leaf. Now that you've seen how absolutely disgusting this plant is, because there are mealybugs literally everywhere in each of the crevices on the leaves, in the sinus, on the petioles, especially in new unfurling leaves, there seems to be a prime spot for them to hang out. I will have no mercy on them today. I will have to remove all of them. For this you can use some paper towels or q-tips and then just dunk them into some ethanol or hydrogen peroxide solution, whatever you have available. And then you can just tap on the little mealy bugs and they will kind of like dissolve and stick to the q-tips. So it's kind of satisfying, not gonna lie. So let's just go ahead and do that <laughs> because I can't wait to clean this baby up. Now that I removed all of the mealybugs that were visible to me, I'm going ahead and shower this baby really hard. <laughs> It's mostly clean, so I can A, determine whether it's dirt or pests that are still on there. I think I also got a few of the last mealybugs that were clinging on to DLI. Step three is to fix up the plant. I need to decide what I want to do with it. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to propagate it to sell or what is going on, you know? <laughs> As you might know, Philodendron plowmanii is a crawler. So you already see the plant grew out of the pot, kind of weird, which isn't necessarily the best thing because this part right here isn't rooted yet. If it was planted in a long planter, it would be much easier to propagate at this point. <laughs> We 
going to cheat a little bit because I don't have a long planter, but we might we might make something work. First, I want to remove the soil. It's never bad to look at the root situation. I'm also going to remove all of these old petiola sheets that are still on here. So you can just peel those off as well, just in case there are any pests hiding behind there. Oh, and this right here is a flower which is kind of cool but i don't think i need a flower right now the plant should put its energy elsewhere so i am going to remove the flower see this little fella was still hiding in there that's why i want to clean off all the little crevices of the plant good thing is the roots look quite healthy though since I don't have a long planter at hand, I'm going to use two planters. Okay, I do want to cut off this one leaf. I think it's not going to be this bad. Okay. Ta -da. Unfortunately, the stem has a really odd shape. It's bent down, so it's really hard to pot it anywhere. We might have to actually cut it. Hmm, I can't really pot it up sideways. Oh no! Oh, that's a shame. I really thought I could keep it in one piece. One piece. With some clean scissors, let's take one top cutting and then see how many more <clears throat> cuttings we will take. So I think here. Okay. We've got the top cutting. Oh my god, bye. I will just put this one up in here as well. Keep this one filled with soil and eventually the roots can grow directly into the soil. And after that, I can propagate very safely like this. I am done on this one. Now I am left with those two cuttings right here. We have a single note cutting and then we have the wonky top cutting that is oddly shaped to say the least. It's not looking great but I could try to pot it up laying on soil like this. If any of you already tried Propagating a Philodendron plowmanii. Have you tried it directly in soil and did it work? Just let me know in the comments. Do they root in soil or I don't know. I'm a little bit scared to just put it in soil like this. But the top cuttings always root the best. So I might, I might give it a try in such a shallow pot. And then just put it on like this. This is so ugly, man. <laughs> I need to I need to somehow secure it to the soil and I'm going to try with this little wire just pin it into the soil it is really hard to secure this because this leaf right here is so heavy I might need to cut it off as well oh no I potted up this wonky ass top cutting as best as I could which is not really good this project is not going as planned at all basically and i'm just hoping it will root really quick so it doesn't die lastly i have this little stem piece cutting which i will just stick into some water the last step today is certainly the most important step in this whole treatment project because i'm going to use the Cario Rose Spray, which is a systemic pesticide and it treats all sucking insects. So all of the pests that are sucking on the leaf juices will ingest the pesticide and hopefully die. We 
With all the plants treated, we are done for today. But since I am a scientist, I will observe the plants for the next three weeks maybe until I can tell if the propagations work, the pests are really gone. Just to make sure that I don't spread any of those disgusting mealybugs on any of my other plants. So let's cross our fingers for some good propagation action and now. Welcome to the future. You can already see there are a few things happening. Not a lot, but let's go through with it. This is the stem cutting that I just popped into water and you can see the leaf is going to fade, but we have a few activated growth points for roots and also I think the auxiliary bud is doing something. Next I have the top cutting which isn't really doing a lot. The leaves are holding up pretty well. Uh, it hasn't gotten any new roots yet. It is rooting directly in soil and I keep it in a prop box. So I hope that it will survive for long enough to produce some roots to sustain itself. But so far we've got nothing, but also nothing is dying. Lastly, I have the mother plant, so everything that is left from the stem and I have it in those two pots to root in the second one. The only leaf that I left on there is looking pretty darn good. The plant doesn't show any signs of decline. I can't spot any mealybugs on the leaves anymore, so I hope that there are no more mealybugs born or some eggs that are still left over and that we got them all. Wait a minute! Guys, did you see that? Did you see that? Watch closely. There's a fucking spider mite just crawling through my picture. What the hell? The audacity of this spider mite. I can't. I'm away on vacation for two weeks now. So take the lead, future relax, Christina. Welcome to week three of our little updates. I'm uh, not so much relaxed, but at least I'm in the future. We caught the Roni pretty much the first day of vacation and had to cancel everything and go back home, which sucked, but you know, not going to be mad about it anymore. Let's talk about the plants. This little number right here, I know it looks bad to say the least, it looks really bad. I will probably just cut it off. The stem on the other hand is looking excellent. We've got some little red roots and a new growth point coming in as well. So I'm pretty pleased. I might transfer this into perlite. For the mother plant, we have a few things to note. The mealybugs are pretty much gone. I haven't seen any new big mealybugs on here, which is good. So a few weeks back, I noticed some spider mite outbreaks in my collection before I bought this baby. And as soon as I came back, I bought some predatory mites. So I decided I would also treat this one additionally. And they come on those little bean leaves and then you just lay it on top of your plant but look here we have two nodes that activated one was here before one is new and it is really growing fast i wasn't expecting that i can't really see any roots growing into the soil yet but that's fine i'm just happy that it's continuing to grow and the leaf is still holding on really well the last cutting that I took was the top cutting and I have it in my prop box right here. So let's check it out. In here I also use the predatory mites. You see these bean leaves in the box. The older leaf that was still on there unfortunately did not make it like at all. It's pretty much dead. I will just snip it off. We will have a way better balance of the cutting in the pot as well. And then here you can see the new leaf that was coming in at the time of propagation. We have the bean leaf on there. It turned upwards, which is great. That was exactly what I was going for. You can see that the growth point also turned upwards, which is great. And the red little roots look so damn cute. 
So I'm pretty pleased with the outcome of my little plant project. I want to hear your experiences with plants that were in really bad conditions. You bought them on sale to rescue and rehab them, to nurse them back to health. And if you were successful with it or if it was a bad idea, let me know down in comments. I would love to read your stories. I will now leave you with this video because YouTube thinks it's best for you. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye.